Do, do you want me to come stand outside the Astoria or the main thing? Okay, okay, I'll come now, I'll come now. I know where you are. Our next band have been around for 16 years and are without question one of the vertical bodies in extreme metal's indestructible backbone. Get ready for Enslaved. I'm here with Grutler from Enslaved and we're at the Mean Fiddler and they're playing the Mean Fiddler tonight. How are you doing? Pretty well. Uh, so the sixth show, so we, yeah, we have a very much uh, get used to tour life once again, uh, which is of course crappy. But uh, you know, <laughs> how how's? Sorry, yeah. uh, no. Why would you say it's crappy? Are you? Is it is it difficult to get back into touring if you haven't been touring for a while? No, you get used to it after, after a couple of shows, but uh, it's not a act. It's not a, exactly a five star hotel you're living on. You're living uh, with a bunch of. Uh, other dirty guys on a crowded tour bus and yeah and you can't even take a shower every day well uh, so far we have been able to do so you've been touring a lot like you know through the years how do you um, keep yourself motivated to want to play a really good set every night I, well, I mean it's, it's what we do I mean uh, uh, playing live is the is the kind of uh, ultimate thing for me I'm uh, being in a band I mean uh, P performing live uh, proves uh, you as a, yeah, as a band. I mean, every, everyone can record a good studio album, but uh, playing live is, is the most essential thing you do. And we, of course, we, we really do it because we enjoy it very much. So. Tell us a bit more about your recording process. Do you know what you're going to do before you get into studio? And do you ever like swap instruments or anything like that? Uh, well, we know most of it. Um, we, uh, Ivar is always making a, a kind of a sketches of all the tracks with the guitars and program drums. Uh, then me and Harban would go do the vocal arrangements, record them, uh, at least the, the melodies and uh, the ideas. Uh, then Arve and Ivar will uh, will uh, work together on uh, where to put the lead, lead parts and stuff like that. And uh, and Kato actually travels down to Portugal to a friend's place to to um, do pre-production of the drums. Why why do you, why does he go to Portugal? Is, is, it, is it just because um, he can go do it there, or is it a kind of nice place to kind of do that kind of thing? He's an old guy and he likes the heat. You won the Norwegian Spellerman Award, which is the um, equivalent to a Grammy. How do you feel about the fact that bands such as yourself were basically frowned upon um, not so many years ago, and now you're winning these awards and also being nominated for these awards? Yeah, well, uh, there are a lot of um, extreme metal is a very big, big genre. Uh, in it's actually the biggest uh, Norwegian export um, music, or how shall I put it? I mean, yeah, musical export is it? Uh, so. A lot of people are into it, uh, so it's, it's impossible for the television and uh, to, to ignore it. It's still being ignored, in, uh, but not, not, not at the same level as like 15 years ago when, when it was thrown upon because of the church burnings and, and uh, the killings, and, yeah, obviously. Up to now you've released um, nine albums. Do you ever listen to an album when it's done and think, you know what, maybe next time I want to do this differently or I want to add this. Does that ever happen? We took a great step on Rune actually, uh, production-wise. But uh, we still find uh, things to put the finger on and things that could have, been done, could have been done better, of course. I mean, that's a natural part of the development of the whole band. I would, you know. 
But there's also so much you can do to one thing before it actually becomes too much. So you have to kind of you have to kind of decide at one point to stop. Is that right? No, I mean we just keep going. Like yeah, we just keep going. We don't have, have any limits or boundaries. We just keep going. Yeah. See where it goes. After making music and touring for so many years, I'm sure you've got loads of stories to tell. Do you think that you'll ever release a book telling us about enslaved and adventures? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would read it. I would definitely. You don't want to read that crap. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be censored, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you can always do it when when. Three years, age limit or something like that. You know? <laughs> okay, so we wouldn't be able to handle it. Enslaved the full-time job for you? Uh, parts of the area it is, but um, I mean it's it's very difficult to to earn enough money to make to make a living. Only yeah, only I mean we are touring maybe maybe three or four months a year, so the rest of the year uh, and, and in between we have to have some jobs on the side. Yeah. And Enslaved has also been going, like, like I said, for 16 years. What do, you, what do you still find exciting about being an Enslaved and being in a band? Recording albums, making music, arranging, uh, make, make arrangements. Uh, very interesting still. Uh, performing live, performing live in countries we've never been before. We just played India. Other, actually, we didn't know anything about the metal scene in India, but it's... Uh, it's actually pretty big. I mean, it's small to be. Uh, it's, it's small in India, but you have like 1.3 million people, three billion. I'm sorry. So, in Delhi, where we played, uh, I mean, on the gig it was like 8,000 people. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. It's one of the biggest crowds we ever had uh, in Delhi. So, it, it was a strange but very cool experience. Somewhere that there was a practical joke made that you were maybe that the band Enslaved was in a South Park episode. What is that about? Oh, that was just bollocks, basically. It was um, it was Kato, the drummer, uh, that found something on the uh, some site on the internet that you could make your own South Park characters, and that was it. And he made a, a couple of characters and and uh, told uh, one of the guys in the record company, and he. And it was good, blown out of proportion, basically. Hugely out of proportion. You know, I was the radio and radio channels and fucking television called. That's good promotion for you, though. I mean, come on. Oh, it's so cool that you're gonna be in South Park. It's like ah, call the record company. <laughs> That's really cool. But I mean, would you mind if you were in South Park? I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it would be cool. But of course, uh, I mean, I think the, the news or, or uh, the, the the joke actually reached the South Park uh, producers, and they were kind of pissed, actually. <laughs> yeah, because people were like, "Oh, so we're gonna add enslaved? Who's enslaved?" Oh, so yeah, well, then they should have just done it. If you think about it, they should have just not gone with you know. Done, they should have just done. Of course, it. they should. You know. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. And do you have anything else to add, just to wrap up the interview? I would like to salute our uh, all of our British fans, actually. You have many of them. Thank you very much. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much. And I, I look forward to seeing your show tonight. So tough. I'm going to go watch the show now. So bye.